Now that the internal cabling has been done, we can do the initial setup procedure to give the equipment its identity in the network. This is done using the installation wizard, which consists of two parts. There is the radio terminal configuration and the configuration of network element parameters. During this procedure, I'll be referring to the Minilink traffic node version for the European market. The Etsy manuals will therefore be used. This is because the equipment conforms to standards set by the European Telecommunications Standards Institute. The network element parameters can be set either manually or automatically. The purpose of the radio terminal configuration is to prepare the radio terminals for antenna alignment. Now this should be done indoors before the radio unit installation. The network element parameter configuration is then done after antenna alignment has been completed. If the link is only a short distance, then you may need to fit or configure in software an attenuator. For more information about this, refer to the Outdoor Installation Manual. Make sure that the local craft terminal software is correctly set up and that the Minilink Service Manager software is installed on the computer if it is required. Later versions may be configured via the USB port using a normal web browser. Refer to the Minilink Traffic Node Operation Manual and the Minilink Service Manager Installation Guide if you need more information about requirements and installation instructions. Now go and check that you have got all the tools that you will be needing. We will begin with the radio terminal configuration. Begin this by switching off the power. We switched off the power because there is 60 volts DC out of this socket and we don't want to accidentally cause a short circuit. Another point is don't forget to put on the anti-static bracelet. OK, now we connect the station radio cable between the radio access and modem units. Connect the USB cable between the node processor and the computer. Node processor, computer. Ensure that the USB local area network driver is installed on the computer. Refer to the Minilink traffic node operation manual if you need more information. Switch on the external power supply. The indicator lamps on the node processor should display the following states during startup sequence. Fault 
red should be on power green should be on and the yellow BR should be on for about 60 seconds after the startup sequence is complete the indicator lamps on the node processor should change the fault red should be off the power green is on and the BR yellow should go off start the local craft terminal program in the computer start your normal web browser in the PC and connect to the software in the mini link the mini link craft terminal uses an FTP based server built into the mini link indoor rack to access the terminal connect to the IP address 10.0.0.1 .0 enter your username your password and click the log on button after a few moments you will see a status overview page with a graphic presentation at the bottom of the panel this shows your access module magazine rack and the units fitted to it our indoor rack has one node processor unit one fan unit and one modem unit to the right hand side in the left hand frame we see the management tree expand the terminal node to show the hardware the access module magazine ethernet and radio links expand the magazine and we see the units fitted to it these icons are clickable so we can view and edit the parameters and configurations in the left hand frame right click the modem unit icon in the pop-up menu select configure then configure radio link after a few moments the radio link configuration window will open in the terminal box we can enter a new more meaningful four character identity do this for the terminal and the far end check the radio ID check box so the equipment can receive signals from the far end equipment in our system we have no redundancy so the protection is set to 1 plus 0 refer to your local site installation documents for your site specific settings in the capacity window check the enable XPIC and adaptive modulation according to your local site documents channel spacing and capacity modulation are also determined locally the quantity of E1 links can be set by either clicking the up down arrows or clicking the select button and dragging the slider back and forth until the correct value is displayed the RF configuration window allows you to set the transmit frequency click the up down arrows to step up or down one channel or click the select button and drag the slider back and forth the same function is used to set the output power level click the arrows to step up and down or use the drop down slider control the output power mode is always set to fixed RTPC check the transmitter on box to enable the transmitter now the radio link has been configured click the browser save button to save the configuration changes 
If the necessary licenses are not valid for the selected configuration, then the link will be set to the minimum power level and a warning message displayed. To set the basic network information, in the left hand frame, right click the site name, select Configure, then choose Basic Network. The right hand frame will open the Basic Network Information dialog panel. Name, location, and contact information are just information, but the important parameter is the network. IP address on the local area network. The IP address is listed in the site documents. This is the address that makes the network accessible from the outside world. The subnet mask and default gateway default values are correct in our network. To set the dynamic circuit network parameters in the right hand frame, right click the site name, select configure, then choose DCN. Here we can configure home service proxy routing or static routing. Click static routing. To set up the static routing, we have to state a destination, which is an address that points to the network, a route mask, and a gateway address. The gateway is the host on the network. When the parameters have been entered, click the Create button. The status window will show the static route that was just created. If instead we had chosen the Open Shortest Path First area, we would have to specify the network address, the network subnet mask, an area identity and an area type. The information is given in the site documents. When the parameters have been entered, click the Create button. The status window will show the OSFP route that was just created. Now we should recheck the important configuration settings. Begin with the radio configuration. Right click the modem, select configure, then select configure radio link. In the configure radio link frame, check the information conforms to the site documents. Check the identity, modulation capacity, and transmitter frequency and power level. Next, check out the site network settings. Right click the site, select configure, then select basic NE. In the basic NE frame, check the information conforms to the site documents. Check the NE IP address subnet mask and default gateway. Next, check out the DCN settings. Right click the site, select configure, then select DCN. Check the static routing IP address, mask and gateway. Check the OSPF areas, any address, mask and gateway.
The last check is to confirm that contact can be established to the Operation and Maintenance Centre. In the Personal Computer, check the Start menu button, then select Run. When the Run dialog box opens, enter CMD and click the OK button. A command window will open. After the prompt, enter the command ping space, then the address of your OMC server. This information is provided in the site documents. Our OMC is located at 10.0.0.1. Press Enter and the computer will attempt a ping request to that address four times. On each occasion, the response delay will be recorded.